Hi guys, German Prepper here. In this video, I have excerpts from NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg's latest speech to the AUF summer camp at the Norwegian island of Utøya. Listen through. There's some really interesting information here on NATO's views, their plans, and reasoning. I'll add my own thoughts interspersed as we go. Let's start. Stoltenberg states, NATO is a community where the basic idea is that an attack on one country is an attack on all. One for all and all for one. Its purpose is not to provoke war, the purpose is to prevent war. Preserve peace. As NATO has done for over 70 years, it is more important now than ever in a more dangerous world. With war in Europe, where Russia has invaded Ukraine, President Putin has attacked an entire innocent country and people with military force to achieve his political goals. What he is really doing is challenging the world order we believe in, where all countries, large and small, can choose their own path. He does not accept the sovereignty of other countries. Well, guys, I personally see the value of NATO and, of course, consider it necessary in the face of historical threats from the Soviet Union and, in this day, the Russian Federation and Communist China. One criticism I have, however, is about NATO allowing other countries to choose their own path. This is a highly hypocritical statement when we consider NATO directly militarily intervening in Serbia, Kosovo in 1999, in Afghanistan 2001, in Iraq 2003, to name a few unfortunate conflicts. Anyway, back to Stoltenberg. After all, the war was triggered by his demand for Russian control over Ukraine and his demand that NATO should not be further enlarged. He does not respect Ukraine's desire to become part of our community or other countries' sovereign decisions to apply for NATO membership. This, guys, is NATO and the West's blind spot. We cannot conceive of a world where Western values and organisation are not pushed and expanded without limit into other powers' spheres of historical influence. In my opinion, Ukraine should have, instead of courting NATO, declared neutrality, just like Switzerland and Austria and possibly have avoided the current war. NATO plans for expansion in this case have in fact directly been a contributing factor to a war. Back to Stoltenberg. In this conflict, NATO has two tasks, support Ukraine and prevent the conflict from spreading into a full-scale war between NATO and Russia. First on support for Ukraine. We support Ukraine in their right to self-defence, a right enshrined in international law, the Ukrainian people have shown great courage throughout the war. Well guys, you're probably hearing a few planes flying over today. and I'm not going to cut them all out because it's actually quite apt. They are non-stop sending over supplies to the Eastern Front and quite possibly Ukraine. If you want to know more about the exact level of that support, guys, see my videos. German proxy war, UK proxy war and US proxy war. Carrying on. It is also in our interests that President Putin does not succeed in his ambitions in Ukraine. A world where the lesson for Putin is that he gets what he wants by using military force is also a more dangerous world for us. If Russia wins this war, he will have confirmation that violence works. Then our neighbouring countries may be next. We pay a price for our support to Ukraine, for the military, humanitarian and financial support, for the sanctions which have resulted in increased inflation and higher prices in our countries. But remember, the price we pay may be measured in money. The price Ukraine pays is measured in human lives. Hundreds killed or wounded every day. Stoltenberg makes some interesting points. The West is paying a price in money. The Ukrainians a price in blood for fighting this war. When it comes to stopping Putin, as the media like to put it, I'll simply report that Ukraine is not currently winning the war, even though it is fighting courageously and slowing Russia's advance to victory while reaping a terrible cost on the attacking side. Will this cost in lives, resources and time deter future aggression if Russia eventually, and one might say inevitably wins? The answer is a resounding no. Stoltenberg continues. The second task of NATO is to prevent the war from spreading. We do that both by not being a party to the war, we are not entering Ukraine with troops, we also do it by showing clearly that an attack on a NATO country will trigger a response from the whole of NATO. This is why we are increasing our military presence in the east of the alliance. 
Since the war broke out, we have around 40,000 soldiers under NATO command, mainly in the east, backed by a significant number of aircraft and ships. At the summit in Madrid in June, we adopted a new, large-scale strengthening of our defence, a new force model with earmarked forces that are pre-assigned to defend specific NATO countries. Over 300,000 forces at high readiness across the alliance and more pre-positioned military material primarily to defend the eastern part of the alliance. Or as the ancient Romans said, if you want peace, you must plan for war. Deterrence prevents conflict. So guys, there we have it. Let me finish by pointing out NATO has always performed best when it has stuck to its defensive role and stood united for the common defence of its members. It is right, in my opinion, to increase readiness, strength of deployments and organisation in the hope of deterring future aggression. Peace through strength is a sound strategy, as long as it is not turned into peace through war. To end, here is a quick question for you guys to answer in the comments section. Do you support NATO as a purely defensive alliance, or are there instances where NATO intervention is justified? A divisive topic, but as always, looking forward to reading your answers. Keep prepping guys. Cheers for now.